In part one, I made the spindle and frame of the attachment and explained a bit about the theory of gear hobbing. If you haven't seen part one, this will probably make more sense if you go back and watch that first. The spindle is driven by a stepper motor, via a toothed belt and pulleys. The large pulley needs to be keyed to the spindle. Next I need to make a nut for the end of the spindle. The saw cuts allow the nut to be clamped in place to set the preload on the bearings.
So that's the mechanical part done. But how am I synchronizing the spindle to the milling machine? And how am I setting the division ratio? I'm reusing the control box I built for my previous hobbing attachment. This has some other features such as controlling the feed rate, which I'm not using. This machine doesn't have power feed yet. But the way it works is quite simple. The first thing I need to do is add an encoder to the mill spindle. This lets the control unit know its position and speed. This encoder disc I made with a small slitting saw. I want to attach it to the outer rotating part of the mill spindle, so I can still use the up and down motion of the quill. The encoder disc has 150 slots. 
Using quadrature encoding, this gives 600 pulses per revolution. The stepper motor I'm using has 200 steps per revolution, and the pulleys have a 3 to 1 ratio, which also gives 600 steps for one revolution of the hobbing spindle. This means I can easily divide by any whole number by simply counting that number of pulses from the mill spindle before sending one pulse to the stepper motor. For example, for a 1 to 1 ratio, for every pulse received, one pulse is sent. But that's not very useful for cutting gears. If I want to cut a 42 tooth gear, then I want one revolution of the hobbing spindle for every 42 revolutions of the milling spindle to cut 42 teeth around the gear blank. So I count 42 pulses between each pulse sent. These pulses happen very fast, so the rotation of the spindle is smooth rather than a series of steps. Should the mill spindle turn backwards, then the count is decreased instead of increased, so I never lose position and can cut in both forwards and backwards directions. The teeth on a gear cutting hob wrap around it in a spiral. This means they are at an angle to the horizontal. The head on the milling machine must be tilted the other way, so that the teeth line up with the direction of cut. This angle is normally stamped on the gear hob. The gear blank is first turned to the correct diameter. The number of teeth is set. The y-axis is slowly advanced until the cutter just makes contact. Then it is zeroed. and advanced to the full depth of cut, three millimeters in this case. The cut is taken along the X axis. Since the hob is cutting all the way around the gear, the feed rate has to be slow.
To cut helical gears, it's just a case of tilting the spindle to the correct angle. The angle of the hob does not need to be changed. You might be wondering why I made the spindle able to rotate all the way up to 90 degrees. Well, there's one more trick it can do. This cutter I also made with the hobbing attachment. Technically this is no longer gear hobbing, this is known as gear skiving, and it's one of the few ways to produce internal gears or cut gear teeth up to a shoulder on a normal rotary milling machine. I can hear what you're thinking, that was only a plastic gear. Will it work on steel? I was actually surprised how well that worked. <laughs> 